Okay, so a really short video this morning. I just wanted to update you all on a bunch of new settings that have appeared for the K series inverter and the latest firmware. That's firmware versions uh, 141 of the master and 137 of the manager firmware for these inverters. But because of the hardware similarities between the K series and the generation two of the H series and pretty much all the other products in the current latest generation firmwares that you see or changes that you see on one inverter typically trickle across to all the other inverters in neighboring firmware updates. So currently on the K series as of the 13th of January 25, what you're looking at on the installer or agent options, these should be accessible through the front panel as well, but um, you can ask your installer to change these settings for you if you don't have access to them. But there's some new options at the bottom of this screen. So you're able to set an import uh, current limit as well as an export current limit. For most single phase uh, supplies, you're going to be on an 80 or a 100 amp limit. So what this allows you to do, if you've got um, an EV or multiple EV chargers, heat pumps, and also a battery system that charges in the off-peak, you're able to set a current limit. So here I've set mine to 95 amps. That gives me a little bit of headroom uh, from causing myself problems if everything happens to be on at the same time. The Fox inverter through the CT clamp detects approaching or just over 95 amps. It's going to stop charging the battery and that will give you that additional headroom until the amperage drops back down and then it will resume. You've had to sort of manipulate the battery charge current and things like that to try and reduce uh, the try and reduce the, the battery charging. So it's nice to see some settings that are a bit more dynamic, especially as the K series start at seven kilowatts and go right up to 10.5. You have the capacity of using over half a single phase supply just on a um, a battery charging event. So yeah, that's that's a pretty nice feature to see that you can set your import and export. I'm not sure there's gonna be many people too worried about the export limit. Um, you typically will set the export in, in watts on this setting here. Uh, so how many watts are you, concurrent power are you trying to limit yourself to? It goes right up to 30,000 watts, so 30 kilowatts, which is, I'm not able to achieve that. I don't have a big enough array to go anywhere near that, so this setting is almost redundant, but you can set your export limit in amps. Important for someone, it probably is going to, uh, they'll probably add any settings also to comply with some of the new G99 requirements that are coming out, but, um, but yeah, import and export limit. The biggest one that they've not communicated or advertised, which I think is huge in terms of a, a new capability, is being able to set a meter compensation. And I wanted to give you a quick demo of what that means. So you have probably noticed that even on a bright sunny day, whilst your surplus solar is being fed into your battery when you're on self-use mode, you'll notice that nearly all the time, outside of when you're actively exporting power to the grid, you're using a small amount of power. Depending on the inverter, the battery combination, how far you are from the CT, how accurate your CT is, uh, you can be anywhere from 20 to 40 watts all the time as use, uh, and unless you're exporting. And although 20 to 40 watts for most of the day isn't going to amount to very, it's only going to be a few pence a day of sort of peak rate usage. It does add up and you've not had the ability to set that sort of grid pressure or grid, uh, grid feedback. You've not had that setting in a Fox inverter before. Now we do starting with the K series. So I've set my inverter to wherever possible, always try and maintain a positive or a negative pushback on the grid of 120 watts and that means that instead of using 20 to 40 watts constantly 
I'm pushing a little bit of power back, which means that I should be able to get close to using around zero peak rate power. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see here that it's set to a minus 120 watts, so I should be pushing 120 watts back. Obviously, the power demands in the house are constantly changing, but we're trying to get close to this number. So I've got an Octopus Home Mini, which allows me to stream my meter data into Octopus every 10 seconds. There you go. So you can see that right now I'm pushing back to the grid 95 watts of export. I'm not consuming anything from the grid. And you can see that's fluctuating as house loads go up and down. So it's only a small change in terms of the overall ROI of the system, but I think it's a really good improvement that instead of drawing a small amount, I can now push back a small amount and I can set this. So you can see that setting. I can set this from, I can set this up to pushing back 500 watts or pulling 500 watts. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to increase your grid draw, but that's the option and it's in single watts. So I found that about 120 is enough of a buffer that as devices come off, come on and off, I'm not dipping into the grid, the grid while I'm waiting for the inverter to respond. You can obviously increase and decrease this. And this is different to feed-in options where you are actively trying to export power. This is more of a sort of in the background, what pressure on the grid are you, are you, are you uh, trying to push back on? It's all done using... Uh, using the volts on the inverter. So if you can keep your inverter at slightly higher voltage than the grid, it means you'll be pushing power back instead of pulling power. So I know there's been a few people comment about why does a Fox inverter always use a small amount of power from the grid? Well, now if you've got a K-series and very soon if you've got a generation two, you'll be able to change that setting uh, to push back slightly. I'm gonna also ask Fox if they plan on adding this setting for the sort of classic H series. That's a very popular inverter that a lot of people have got. Uh, I'll keep you updated, but I wanted to share that uh, what that option does around this meter compensation. The other one, the other option that's new that I haven't yet been able to suss out or get any information on is the grid loss set. I'm suspicious that this is the ability to put this inverter into a mode that's more off-grid friendly, but I haven't had a chance to test it yet. I've been testing these top three new options. Anyway, hope you found that uh, interesting and that if you've got a K-series and you want to be able to always push a small amount of power back to the grid to sort of save that peak usage, I'll let you know at the end of the month if I've been able to keep all of my usage solely in off-peak and not even have that transient power uh, being charged at peak rate. Have a great day.